welcome to Insight, the program where we do a deep dive into the views of industry leaders, businesses and the news behind the news that affects the aerospace and defence industries in the Middle East, Africa and India. I'm Alan Peaford. This month, Canada's multinational training business, CAE, announced it was spending just over a billion dollars on buying the military training arm of L3 Harris at a multiple of 13.5. It's a mega deal for the training industry. Now both L3 and CAE have been active in our part of the world. So what does it mean for us? What does it mean for CAE and its global business? And how will customers benefit from the deal? Well, I'm delighted to be joined online now by CAE's Vice President of International, Marc Olivier Savoyen in Montreal. Marc, welcome to the programme. Thank Thanks very much for joining us. I'd like to talk about the L3 Harris acquisition. So, Let's do that. It's good news. Tell me why it's so important and why did you do this billion dollar transaction? Yeah, Alan, <clears throat> and we're, let me say we're, we're very excited about this acquisition. I think for us, it represented a unique opportunity to grow the company and in a very particular acquisition, and it's a rare case that it happens like this. I think we will create value for all C stakeholders, whether it's a customer, or whether it's our shareholders or even our employees. The, uh, the acquisition is actually very complementary to the operations that we are having today. And again, it's very rare that we can see almost a, a one-to-one complementary, where there's almost no overlap of our business. And in fact, all components of L3 Harris will be accelerators to our strategy in our defense and security business. So when you look at the portfolio, the strength of L3 Harris, again, uh, looking at where they, they have been very well known for, whether it's fighter aircraft, bomber aircraft, their strength in US research have environment, army rotary ring, summary, and there's like being a remotely piloted aircraft. These are very complementary to the files where we're strong on. So combining both portfolio, we will have an extremely good coverage of the military five main domains. So there are major parts of the L3 Harris business that CAE wasn't previously doing. So what you're saying is it really does align with your whole business strategy. Yeah, exactly. So, so if you look at our strategy, I mean, in, in simple term, uh, we want to grow and, and growing through our core training market but also expand into what we consider an adjacent, adjacent uh, mission and operation uh, support, and also continue to expand geographically. So if we look at the three elements and, and see how the L3 Aris will help us achieving uh, these three components. First of all, as you highlighted in the core training market, very complementary portfolio. So we will immediately be able to, to achieve a level of synergies across this portfolio. Now, if you look also, uh, there's domains where C was not present, such as space and cyber. So, so actually L3 Aris and C will be very present in the five key domain. And our strategy was to align ourselves closely with the US national defense strategy, which we believe will be leading the front on, uh, in the world. And in, that, in such a way, uh, we will be in a position to help nations prepare for near peer adversary across multi-domain operation. Very importantly, we truly believe that preparing nations in such an environment will demand a greater use of simulation-based training and mission support across all these environments. And we believe with the L3 acquisition, we will be in the right soft spot for us to be able to grow and expand. Well, that's great because as a Canadian company, it's very different and you're looking at the American market and we've seen the US being protective in the past. So it's quite interesting that you're doing that. Do you see challenges, by the way, as a, as a Canadian business with such a position in the US defense activities? Yeah, so, so actually on that front, uh, there's a lot of precedence for us to have been uh, doing this. And in fact, if you look at, at before the L3 Harris, the international region, which I, which I lead, uh, was about 50% of business, which means that the other 50% of business was already in the United States. 
and we, where we were already doing classified programs in the United States. So I think we well prove that we are not only able to do this, but we do this greatly. And there's a lot of other uh, international companies who have a significant U.S. contingent. Uh, the, the likes of BA Systems, for example, which are well known ar around the world, have a significant U.S. business where they do work across uh, different classification programs. So we don't believe that's an issue. And particularly, let me say, as you mentioned, we are Canadian companies. We are part of Five Eyes. Uh, um, and, and we are actually, if you look at the international region, we're very well represented five countries of the Five Eyes uh, Consortium, which share uh, an, an immense amount of data uh, that, that, that assumes a level of classification. So we actually don't see a significant issue. And, and rather from a, from a company perspective, from a strategy perspective, what we see actually is, is, is if, you, if you look at what L3 Harris was very good at, it was very much concentrated on the US market. In comparison, we are very well represented uh, in the international front, where again, as I said, about 50% of our business was around the world. And, and the way we we're going after that business is we actually set local companies all across that can serve the customer locally. So we've been very good at leveraging assets that we have across the world and delivering them locally. So again, uh, we believe that L3 assets through the CE network will be and further and provide better delivered service to the end customers everywhere around the world. Okay, I want to take you into that international market right now. And of course, we've got a particular interest in Africa, India and the Middle East. And I think you've had a significant presence there. So can you tell us, just share with me a bit of your vision for why CAE's business is going to operate going forward and the way it is in the Middle East region? Yeah, as you suggested, Alan, I think the Middle East region is very important for us. So if you look at the uh, uh, most of the country's strategy in the Middle East is, is to achieve a knowledge-based economy through innovation and digital transformation. And they're very much at the forefront of this, and particularly where it affects national security, which, which when you look at our strategy, in fact, it aligns very well with our vision. Our goal in the Middle East is to contribute to this digital transformation and military modernization as a provider of training and operation support solutions. And the way we are gonna do this is actually to grow locally, highly skilled workforce to support the local customers with local workforce and let me say global knowledge. And that's the way we're going after a business. That's the way we've been successful around the international region. And we're, we're setting this up with companies in the Middle East now. Now, we've heard on our programs recently, talking to the Saudi Arabian military industries and their regulator, about that very thing of localization, developing knowledge bases within those countries. Do you see the US simulation and training technologies being part of that and being beneficial to the countries in the Middle East? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, and let, let me say, I mean, we thrive in the digital world. So from a technology perspective, we have, I think, what it takes to do this. But the way we, uh, our strategy is actually to develop these technologies with our customer. Yes, we have core IPs and whatnot, but the idea, again, is to enable and empower the local office, which we are developing. And in the Middle East, we're doing this with local partners. So we're, we are creating local companies uh, leveraging local knowledge as well, and creating new products, creating new solutions that, that are tailored to, to the local economy and local requirements, but, but very importantly, made available to our global network. So in that way, our own strategy and the way we're going after business is actually very much aligned with the requirements of the Middle East. And so we don't have to do anything special in a way. This is part of our recipe for success. Which, which gets very well received so far in the Middle East. We recently saw CAE being very effective at IDEX in Abu Dhabi. So could you just talk directly about the UAE and how much you're helping the UAE with growing that knowledge base? Yeah, let me, and, and before I go to the specifics, let, let me uh, bring a couple of points back. And I think it's very relevant. If you look at our strategy, and I, I talked about digital uh, digitalization and, and modern 
technology. I think it's worth mentioning again that we are investing over a billion dollar in R&D program called digital intelligence, which will, we believe will revolutionize training and mission support. So our vision of the future actually is, is much, of, uh, much of the training experience, but as well as if you can push it to decision-making process or strategy development and, and future force development will happen in, within a virtual environment or with a virtual environment to support the concept. And this is actually where we're investing. So actually in the, in the UAE, we are gonna create an advanced R&D center that will provide uh, local capability that will demonstrate capability. And I will work very closely with, uh, with the local universities as well as with the local companies so we can harvest the local innovation towards our mission and our goal. Now, if you look at, at the specifics of the contracts, and I know, you know at the end it has to come down to what type of work do we do in the country. So we talked about our aspirations to do R&D. The current, if you look at the current diversified portfolio we have in, in the Middle East, uh, particularly in UAE. So, so we have three, let's say three landmark contracts there where one, we operate um, the, the remotely piloted aircraft training center in Liwa, uh, which again brings innov innovation in synthetics. Uh, we are nearing the completion of, of, a helicopter, of two helicopter simulators for the UE Joint Aviation Command. And again, I, I, we talked a lot about aerospace, but uh, we, we are also developing um, probably the biggest synthetic comprehensive naval training center in the world for the UAE Navy, where all training can, um, from basic operation training, basic operator training to mission training can happen in a fully integrated synthetic environment. So that's the UAE covered. But there's a lot of other countries in the Middle East. Do you think the programs are going to benefit the other nations as well? Yeah, absolutely. I, I think, and let me just give you a bit of a, a round tour of the Middle East and some of the key contracts where we're involved in today. Uh, and again, it's, it's a small element of where we are. I think it could give you a bit of an idea as to where we want to move forward and the diversity of the portfolio. So actually, we're very proud to be developing what we call a joint multinational simulation center in, in one of the GCC country, uh, which will actually train all the leadership, all the commanders and operators for the Army, Air Force, Navy, and Staff College. And that's a capability that once established will be a landmark again for, for if you wish, cut and paste in, in, in multiple countries in the Middle East. In Oman, we are establishing and, uh, the Oman Aviation Academy, which will actually train and support pilots for both civil and military uh, sector in Oman and in surrounding uh, in the region. And again, if you make the link to L3 Iris, where we have acquired DAS Aviation as part of the acquisition, this is a very good element showing that tomorrow CE will cover the entirety of the pilot generation pipeline from basic ab to to full conversion training. In Qatar, we're currently developing the NH-90 helicopter simulator with Leonardo, which will be delivered uh, with multiple milestones across the next year. And, uh, and we are also supporting DAE systems, providing them with the, uh, our latest MRE series visual systems, which provide fully immersive visualizations for the Eurofighter Typhoon simulators. Um, and, and these are just a few examples to show you that we are present in these, in these countries. As you mentioned before, L3 Harris was present in Saudi Arabia, and I will give us a jump start at this country where we have multiple uh, pursuits at the moment. So again, I think looking forward, the Middle East will actually be a growth sector for CAE, and the L3 Harris acquisition will give us a good footprint for us to expand again faster than what was originally planned. So how do you see that integration happening? Because L3 are operating obviously in the Middle East at the moment as well. 
Are you coming into one single base? And how soon will people start to see the benefits of these two businesses coming together? Yeah, so it's a bit early still to say about, uh, to, to give you some of the details of integration. Again, uh, when we look at, at the L3 Harris portfolio and, and where they're strong at and where CE is strong at, it's very rare that, that, that we find the same level of complementary. So, and, and we've been speaking with customers since the announcement. And uh, again, I think all customers are, have been very well uh, receiving this news as the, all they can see will be an added uh, service quality. So uh, they are present in the Middle East. And again, they're present on different files where CE is. So again, what I think we'll be able to do there is provide a better integrated service to all these customers, simply leveraging the, the, different, uh, the different locations where we are present and the local manning. And I, I see in this area, no, um, let's say, uh, no synergy loss, only positive opportunities. So Mark Olivier, thank you so much for joining us and explaining the whole way that works. And I'm sure we're gonna see an example here of where the whole becomes greater than the sum of the parts. So thank you very much for joining us on this program and really giving us the insight into what CAE is doing in military Perfect. training. Perfect. Thank you very much, Alan. Thank you.